All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk a little bit about Wonder Woman for a minute. And I got into conversation with someone who was commenting on one of my videos, which had to do with Wonder Woman and Harley Quinn. And that person was trying to show that Wonder Woman came from the Amazons, and the Amazons were all lesbians. And his sight, his citing of that, his argument is that the Amazons actually derived from the woman of Lesbos. And he argues that Lesbos is a part of the Ukraine. Now, before I go any further, here is the actual account of what the Amazons were, okay? And yes, it was part mythology, Greek mythology, but it's also part real. It's also part true. So the stories, they're, they're bits and pieces of truth and, and, then, and, and myth involved in that. But the mythos or the, the grand story goes like this. The Amazons... They were known as the Scythian woman. Remember Thymuscira? Thymuscira, you know, is kind of a derivative of, uh, you know, Scythian, you know. Anyway, and they were mythologized in Greek mythology as a race of woman warriors, okay? Herodotus reported that they were related to the Scythians, which are like Persians, uh, Iranian people, and placed them in a region bordering Scythia in Sarmatia, which is a modern territory of Ukraine. So, when we think of uh, the Amazons, they were actually located somewhere near the Ukraine. Us, other historiographers placed them in Anatolia, or sometimes Libya. Now, let's just look on the map, first of all, uh, for those various things, okay? So, the Ukraine is actually all the way up here, okay? You can see this is the Ukraine territory that goes all the way back there. Let me just, there you go, all the way out, all the way around like this. It comes back this way. And they also have an island off of the Ukraine, a pretty huge one as well. But this guy alleges that they were derived from the lesbians, which were de derived from the island of Lesbos. First of all, lesbians... Anyway, that's another story. The island of Lesbos, if you look at this little white, this little red dotted thing, this points out Lesbos. This is the island here. That's off the coast of Turkey, near to Greece, but it's much closer to Turkey than it is to the Ukraine. That's the, that's the, that's the first point. Now, Libya, modern Libya at least, is found all the way uh, near to Africa. Okay, so Libya is actually more this way here, over here. Okay, so you got Armenia, Azerbaijan, Lebanon, and so on, Syria, and somewhere across here near to Egypt, and thereby Libya is somewhere around here. Okay, this region here. My point, anyway, is this whether they were up in the Ukraine or down by Libya, they weren't. Off the coast of Turkey that's the important thing and this guy he's saying that Lesbos is off the coast of the Ukraine it's found in the Ukraine and he was wrong okay but here's what people don't understand the Amazons and why they even call the Amazons we're gonna get into the Amazons were woman warriors that's what they were and even in the mythology, which you will get into, and you'll get some names that are very familiar in Wonder Woman, you'll actually hear these names as well, is that these women were warriors, first and foremost. So here are some of the notable queens of the Amazons here. You had Penthesilia, okay, who participated in the Trojan War, her sister Hippolyta. Now, if you know, Hippolyta or Hippolyta is actually the mother of Wonder Woman. Okay, Hippolyta, whose magic girdle given to her by her father Ares, Ares is the god of war, of course, was the object of one of the labors of Hercules. So she got Hercules' girdle. Now, what's very important about that is Hippolyta's father was the god of war, which explains why the Amazons were warrior women. Okay, Amazon warriors were often depicted in battle with Greek warriors in Amazon machis in classical art. Okay, here we see a wounded Amazon. Now the thing about the Amazons, 
which is why this myth about them having one breast uh, and they cut off the other one, the right one, is because usually only one breast would be seen and the other would be covered. So that's that's the whole uh, where the mythos comes from. But anyway, they're associated with many historical people through the Roman Empire period and late antiquity. In Roman historiography, there are various accounts of Amazon raids in Anatolia. And then from the early modern period, the name has become a term for female warriors in general. Amazons are said to have founded the cities and temples of Smyrna, right? You must have heard of Smyrna. Even if you read the Bible, you would have known about Smyrna. So they founded these cities and temples of Smyrna, Sinope, Syme, Grine, Ephesus. This is why the Ephesians worshipped Diana, the queen of the Ephesians. Diana, like in Wonder Woman, Diana. Pitania, Magnesia, Clete, Pygia, Latoria, or Latorira, Latoriria, Amestris. According to legend, the Amazons also invented the cavalry. Women on horses. These were the people who invented riding on horseback and fighting wars. Okay? So this was legendary about the Amazons. They were warriors. Now, as to them being lesbians, no. The actual story for the lesbians, you know what? I might just do it in this video. I will show you who the people and the characters are of Lesbos and how they are different to the mythology that Wonder Woman pulls from, which has to do with the Amazons, okay? So they go into the etymology uh, for the word Amazon. It's a Persian, it could probably be a Persian word and it could mean all women, or it could mean uh, without husbands, or it could mean without breasts, okay? So, but, you know, there are different, uh, different words for it. Now, the legendary Amazons were thought to have lived in Pontus, which is modern-day Turkey near the southern shore of the Euxine Sea, the Black Sea. So, let's look at it on the map here. So, here's Turkey. You have to look for the Black Sea. So, let's see if we can find the Black Sea here, first of all, which is the Black Sea. The Mediterranean Sea is not the Black Sea. The Black Sea is up top here. So, they said to have lived somewhere near to the Black Sea, which is up here. So even when they were in Turkey, they still were not off the island of Lesbos. But that doesn't mean that some of them probably went to the island of Lesbos. Who knows? That's possible. But the mythos of the lesbians and the people of the Isle of Lesbos are independent to the Amazonian mythos. Okay? And that's very important for you guys to understand. Because I listen to all these people, you know, arguing for LGBT rights. And I understand that it's politically correct to talk about LGBT rights. But here's my problem. You're trying to change history. You're trying to change the mythos of a given character to try and support your LGBT agenda. And you can't do that. That's being dishonest. Okay? And that's why you guys can't win an argument with me. You know why you can't win an argument with me? Because I come from facts, folks. I always come from facts. And if you don't pull facts from me... You're going to lose this argument, and not only will you lose it, you will look like a liar and a fraud. So when you step up to me, step up with facts, and we'll be okay. But if you step up to me with fiction, I'll expose it. Alright, so let's move on. So when you're talking about the lesbians and the island of Lesbos, this is a place off of the western end of Turkey. The Amazons settled in the uh, southern region of uh, the Black Sea, which is be the northern region of Turkey right here, okay? It's all here. It's written in, and this is Wikipedia. I mean, you can go look for other things. Now, here's the very imp important thing. The Amazons later moved to Thymuscira, which is an actual place. It's called Modern Term on the River Thermodon, the term river in northern Turkey. Okay, so there is actually a place called Thymuscira. All right, that's where Wonder Woman was, and that was called Paradise Island. And here's term in the northern part of Turkey, 
and uh, let me show you it's off the seacoast so if I was to show you uh, Thymuscira it would be somewhere around about here okay so there's actually a place called Thymuscira so Wonder Woman okay comes from Thymuscira she does not come from the island of Lesbos okay and I try to argue with people so they understand why I said the mythos of Wonder Woman doesn't support that she's lesbian. The actual canon, devoid of certain writers, who actually Rucka is one of the writers, and now recently now Grant Morrison has gone and tw twisted it that way. But really and truly, the canon doesn't support that. Um, the mythos doesn't support that. You have to change the mythos, you have to change the canon to support that Wonder Woman is gay or bisexual, which she's not. She's never been. Okay? Like I said, Harley Quinn has been bisexual. She has been in lesbian relationships. That is canon. Okay? You cannot say that Harley Quinn is not that. That's absolutely correct. Grant Morrison was in an alternate universe. So you cannot call Grant Morrison's account of Wonder Woman in Earth One uh, canon. You can't. It's an alternate universe. And he's free to write whatever he wants to. But in terms of canon, in terms of Wonder Woman canon, you cannot say that Wonder Woman is lesbian. Can't. You can't say she's bisexual either. Can't. You'll never get it. And don't tell me that the writer of Wonder Woman was probably involved in a bisexual or lesbian relationship. Well, he couldn't be in a bisexual relationship because he never was with a man. He was, a, you could say, a polygamous relationship. And then, on top of that, you guys are insinuating that his wife and this other woman were in a bisexual relationship. You are insinuating that you do not know. Okay? You have no you not you do not know it for a fact. So all I'm saying is that there's a lot to this thing that we're not talking about, okay? Well that's that's another story for another day. My point anyway is that the writer, he did not write Wonder Woman as a bisexual. He did not write her as a lesbian. He wrote her as a feminist. Absolutely you are right. Okay, let's get the facts right. He wrote her as a feminist, okay? He wrote her as, this is what could happen if women gets power, if they are powerful. And notice that the society that this guy was writing about is very much like the Amazons. Because the Amazon society is a woman-dominated society. However, however, a woman-dominated society where the primary relationships between women is not lesbian, but in fact, sisterhood. And why they call each other sisters for that reason, it was a sisterhood and a bond where women dominated that society. And in that myth of uh, the Amazonia society, which I would like to read right now, we have here intermarriage of Amazons and men from other tribes was used to explain the various origins, for example, the story of the Amazons settling with the Scythians. So the Amazons did have relationships with men, but they mostly had, they were, they dominated their society, okay? In fact, let me just read some, some facts so you guys can understand. It's kind of like a role switch. So in the world today, Men are still the ones who kind of dominate. They have the top positions in society. In fact, women are still struggling to get equal wages with men. In this society, in the Amazonian society, when they took over, um, when they took over, uh, you know, the regions that they did, um, you had once a year they would go in and they go to the Gargarians. A neighboring tribe and they would have children with them and the male children would either be sent back to the tribe or they would be exposed to the wilderness to fend for themselves or they'd be killed if you think about the sisterhood in Star Wars the sisterhood in Star Wars and then in this planet they have the sisterhood and they have the brotherhood it's the same kind of thing and they would get they would take in some of the male children to be slaves and you can see it somewhere here or they would breed a certain type for instance here uh, the girls were brought up by their mothers and trained in agricultural pursuits, hunting, and the art of war. Other versions, when the Amazons went to war, they would not kill all men. Some they would take as slaves, and once or twice a year, they would have sex with their slaves. So, in other words, this was one of, but also in other accounts, like I said, they intermarried with other um, tribes and other people, like the Scythians. But you have to understand that they, uh, 
they were respected because they were this tribe of people who fought like men. And they actually defeated other tribes and other people. And they had a society mostly of women. And most importantly about their society, it was dominated by women. Women were the leaders. And that is something that the creator of Wonder Woman believes. He always believed that women were superior to men in terms of how they would rule and govern things because of their way. I don't believe that. I believe that I believe women have their own skill sets and I think men have their own skill sets and it's like two different worlds and there are advantages to both of them but this guy who actually brought Wonder Woman on the, on the scene and actually was successful with it because they didn't expect this comic to actually be successful and he had to argue his point that it would not fail and thankfully it didn't and what Wonder Woman does is it brings equality and justice and I need to point out the core values of Wonder Woman and the core values where it came from the mythos etc and I think a lot of people just don't understand that now okay we're not done we're not done they invaded the Amazons appearing Greek art in archaic period connected with several Greek legends they invaded Lycia but were defeated by Beller, Beller, Bellerophon who was sent against them by Lobates, the king of that country, in the hope that they might meet his death at their hands. He might meet his death at their hands. These, this was a, a, a nation of warriors. That's why Wonder Woman, and remember these are thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago we're talking about, like, you know, 500 BC and so on, right? We're talking about this kingdom. But the point anyway is this, that a lot of people think that because you have a monogamous society, that instantaneously means, monogamy means, I'm not monogamous, sorry, homogenous, hom hom homogenous society. It instantaneously means that you're going to have a popularity in homosexual relations. But people don't think like that, and the world wasn't like that. Today, we kind of have become more depraved, and we feel that the only way to have a relationship with someone means you have to have sex with them. There are a lot of relationships where people don't have a lot of sex like husbands and wives, they don't have a lot of sex between them because the relationship is beyond that. And, you know, wild sex is recreational, it's fun and all of that too. Uh, it's primarily for creating families and having children and having offspring, okay? That's its fundamental purpose. And then uh, everything else is like a plus, you know what I mean? Um, so I think a lot of people don't know how to put things in context. So when I heard Rocker say, well, you know, when you have a homogeneous society, it means therefore that they obviously they're going to have sex. No, it's not obvious. It, you think it's obvious, but not necessarily. Okay. Especially if the women are going off raiding someplace and raping or having sex with the people there and then they get children and then they come back. You know what I mean? So, I mean, you're talking about warriors. That's what people forget. This is a nation of warriors, primarily fighting, okay? You got your agriculture to keep yourself assist, but they went out there and they took down cities, okay? So, you have to think about these things, you know? Um, and a lot of these stories are partly true, partly not so true, right? Anyway, I don't want to go into too much more about that except to say that Wonder Woman is derived from that. You can go read more on Wikipedia. You can go read the annals of different accounts, different Greek accounts of the Amazons, even the individual Amazons. Nobody's saying that there weren't lesbians among them. Of course. Just like how you have homosexuals among Even in a heterogeneous society, you have homosexuals and lesbians. That's going to happen. And homosexuals and lesbians are about, if so much, 5% of a population. Okay? that I may, I may be extremely generous here okay um i'm talking homosexual and bisexual at the same time okay and they're not a majority of a population but let me just make it abundantly clear even though that is the case it doesn't mean people haven't had homosexual relationships with one another at some point in time also another case that people need to understand is that it doesn't mean because these people are a minority it means that you should mistreat them i'm not saying any of that I'm just saying it doesn't stand, it's, see, because a lot of people think that you have to either be socialized to be homosexual or you've got to be born homosexual, okay? It's not something that just happens because the numbers, now we got so many men, that means I'm, I, you no, know, it doesn't mean anything, or so many women, it doesn't mean you're going to be homosexual because of that. No, the numbers don't, it's kind of like this ridiculous notion that they have in evolution and I'm a proponent of evolution, at least microevolution, 
It's a ridiculous, ridiculous notion that if you have more of something, it means, therefore, that things are going to evolve into it. No, it doesn't mean that at all. There's still going to be diversity. There's still going to be um, what they call gene pools. Gene pools are not... People forget. You have to intermix with one another, right? The more variety in a gene pool, yes, you'll get more variations. But even if you didn't have a whole bunch of variety in a gene pool, you're going to get many variations. It's just in eventually going to happen because of probability. So it's like when people talk about the gene pool has been enriched and blah, 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 blah. I laugh because I realize it does not matter because you mix genes, you splice genes, you cut genes. You're going to get variety anyway. See what I'm saying? So there's a lot of things that we assume, and I'm a scientist, I come from a scientific background, which is why I talk so much about facts. Um, we assume a lot of things that don't really make, they don't add up, okay? And so that's why I said Rucker's argument, I can't agree with it, I disagree with his argument. It has nothing to do with my belief system. You know, yes, I don't support LGBT uh, behavior, that's, that goes without saying, as far as I'm concerned. But it doesn't mean that I hate LGBTs. Hell no. <laughs> they people just like me. Right? I do not support smoking cigarettes. I do not endorse it. It's legal, but I don't endorse it. I do not endorse uncontrolled alcohol abuse just because you're an adult. I don't, endo I don't endorse intemperance. Period. You know what I mean? gorging food and stuff and all of them are to me are lumped in the same category you know it's called indiscipline indis, indiscipline indiscretion and addiction okay so that's how i look at it now in terms of people who are born a certain way man i feel for them because there's no way on earth i could ever fit into their shoes and i just wish that they can get a you know sex change if they can't well you know it's what it is it's just what it is life is like that so i'm not mad at the lgbt community and it's not because i'm not doing this video i know it's a controversial video but i don't care i'm not doing this video because i hate the lgbt community hell no i don't hate them the people just like everybody else in fact if we could just throw away the word LGBT, it doesn't really matter to me because they're people. You know what I mean? I'm a person. I'm just saying, if you're going to make an argument for LGBT community, you can talk about Harley Quinn. You can talk about there are heroes who are gay in, in comic book lore. There are. A lot of them. Do I have a problem with it? No. Okay? It's another, it's another variation of the theme, and it's very possible why not? My point is, as far as I know, Wonder Woman has not been gay in the comics or in the mythos. And that's where, you, when you use your argument to try and force your agenda, that's where I have a problem. Okay? And it's not because Wonder Woman epitomizes these grand theme things that she can't be gay. It's not that. It's just that the mythos does not support that. Right? And, and that's where me and all the other people, I'm like, wait, come. that's why you had an outrage for this thing. Because... Wonder Woman doesn't come from those roots. People are trying to force that on people. They're trying to force their agenda, and that's where people are going to always have an outrage for it. And those people are saying, oh, well, Wonder Woman's always been gay as far as I can... You didn't read a damn comic. <laughs> you haven't read a damn comic. You don't know the mythos. You clearly don't. All right? Wonder Woman is definitely an ambassador for feminism. She is. Don't mix up feminism with LGBT. Don't mix it up. They're not the same. Okay? However, there are a lot of gay people and gay rights groups which have supported feminism and uh, helped the, the, the battle move forward. That is true. All right, you guys. On that note, you guys have a great one. Do finish reading out this information. Fact check me. Make sure I'm on the right path. You guys have a good one.